With most of the country doing their work from home, having an entirely functional setup has become more and more important than it ever has been. And as such, having the right tools is absolutely essential. For the past near five months, I've been using Apple's Magic Trackpad 2 in combination with my desktop setup in order to get all my school and video production done. In that time, I've determined who this trackpad is and is not for. In order to help you decide whether this device would be a good investment for you, I'll go into depth on this device's quality, functionality, and value. When I originally unboxed this trackpad, I remember being surprised as to how heavy and as a result, how premium it felt in the hand. The top and sides of the trackpad is made from some kind of durable feeling metal, while the bottom is made from a kind of high quality feeling plastic. I assume there is some added weight on the inside as it is surprisingly heavy. If that's the case, it's a welcome addition as this added weight in combination with the grippy pads on the bottom have entirely prevented the trackpad from sliding around even after extended editing use in which I slide my fingers back and forth when I'm going through a long timeline, for example. And after four months of hours a day of daily use, I'd say the quality has held up exactly as expected. With a little bit of cleaning, the trackpad looks and more importantly, feels as good as new. Overall, I'm confident this trackpad will last for the years to come with the high level of use I put it through. No doubt functionality will be the most challenging to review as for a person like me, this trackpad's functionality is exponentially useful. However, for someone who plays a lot of video games, this trackpad would seem like an enormous waste of money and perfectly good money that could be spent on RGB for example. As such, it's important I make it clear I will review this trackpad from the perspective of a content creator, student, and web surfer who does not play any video games at all. Apple says, quote, Magic Trackpad 2 is rechargeable with a built-in battery and brings force touch to the desktop for the very first time. Four force sensors underneath the trackpad surface allow you to click anywhere and detect subtle differences in the amount of pressure you apply, bringing increased functionality to your fingertips and enabling a deeper connection to your content, end quote. And in practice, this essentially translates to making the trackpad feel like an extension of the screen. This device feels as though a touchscreen monitor was placed on my desk. All the motions are very similar to that of said touchscreen monitor, and rightfully so, as it makes using this device feel very natural and easy. However, if you don't like the different commands that Apple sends these trackpads preloaded with, you can always go into settings and change most all of their functions. Moreover, Apple also says, quote, features an edge-to-edge -edge glass surface area that is nearly 30% larger than the previous trackpad, end quote. In practice, this means you almost never run out of the trackpad when you're using it. So when you're scrubbing through even the longest timelines, you will likely find it troublesome to scroll past the width of this device. At first, I was a bit skeptical on whether this device was over the top in size as it even dwarfs the already enormous trackpad on my 16-inch MacBook Pro. However, those worries were immediately put to rest when I first put the device next to my Magic Keyboard as it lines up perfectly in height and width with the keyboard. Additionally, Apple says the trackpad is quote 4.0 Bluetooth enabled end quote and I've had no issues with it. As soon as my MacBook gets in range, it instantly connects to the point of me forgetting there's a Bluetooth connection at all and it feels kind of strange, almost like it's a wired connection. Then perhaps one of the most impressive aspects of this device to me is its battery life. Most people get about a month of use out of the device before it needs to be charged and that's consistent with what I found to be true in the past four months of consistent use. If you're curious as to how this device compares to the Magic Mouse, I made an entirely separate video comparing the two you can watch over here. Overall, I would say I'm impressed with the functionality of this device. However, I've come to expect above and beyond with all Apple products I buy, and that's exactly what this device achieved. As such, this device's functionality worked exactly as expected. If this trackpad was insanely overpriced, both the quality and functionality would be entirely irrelevant as most people wouldn't be able to get their hands on it. Fortunately, it comes with a price tag of 137 US dollars on Amazon, and I'd say this device is fairly priced. Of course, 137 US dollars is nothing to sneeze at. However, I'd argue that if you're in the market for a work-oriented addition to your setup, you are getting the best trackpad on the market that, if you have a MacBook, will synchronize with your ecosystem seamlessly. So in conclusion, after four months of use with its impressive quality, diverse functionality, and strong value, I'd say this trackpad is a great investment meant for those who need a device for their work-oriented desk setup. It's very important to note that I do not recommend you buy this if you play any games that involve a mouse, as this device will entirely ruin your experience. However, otherwise, I can wholeheartedly recommend this device. Thank you for watching, and please do consider subscribing, as only 2% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed, and any support really does help.